Hey everyone, this is Jordan from RoadToFullTime.com and welcome to the second episode of the podcast here. And But before I get started with anything, I mainly want to talk about uh, that I am doing something a little bit different. Uh, I did this actually a long time ago when this was the Picture Monk podcast. I'm actually doing a video podcast. I'm going to test this out again to see how much engagement I get in this. And so, uh, so this is actually just a regular audio recording like I, I normally would do. Uh, but I'm recording the podcast. I'm recording uh, me in my little office here, <laughs> and uh, I'm talking about the uh, the topic here. So I'm going to have this podcast recorded as a video podcast as well as an audio. So if you if you're more inclined to watch it, uh, just watching it me, and you don't want to see uh, if you don't want to see my ugly face, then don't worry about it. You can still listen to the audio. Um, but if you want to head on to the YouTube channel or go to RoadToFullTime.com, uh, you can see it there as well. So. Uh, for this episode of the podcast, we're going to talk about uh, the importance of a blog on your photography website. Uh, a blog is super, super important. Uh, and before I get started, I actually thought of something real quick. So I got to get my little handy dandy Apple pencil here and jot that down uh, because I don't want to forget that. So as you can see, this is this is a total live podcast. We'll do it live. Um, so, so the first thing we're going to talk about is the importance of a blog. A blog is super, super important. And I'm going to go over a couple little things here. So if you're, if you're a photographer and you have, you know, if you have uh, Joe's wedding photography, if you're, if you're that, you know, a wedding photographer and you don't have a blog on your website, you are actually missing out on a lot of potential traffic to your website. And I'm going to talk about that in just a second. So, uh, first let's go over, um, you know, a, a blog is just not for photographers or, or, or bloggers. Uh, it's not just for bloggers out there. It's, it's, uh, people, a lot of people think that a blog is something like you would see on Pinterest, uh, you know, like 10 ways to cook cookie recipes or something like that. And, and you blog about that. Or some people think that it's just a, an opinion thing. Uh, blogs are really important for almost every website out there because they tell a story. They tell, uh, it's almost like a, uh, it's almost like a, a news, a news feed in a way. It's like an enhanced news feed. So blogs are not just for those who, uh, who want to share um, simple, simple things as far as uh, you know, like a how-to video. Uh, it's it's for sharing a, a news story, a, a something that's going on with your business, and that's why it's so important. Uh, so I'm going to talk about a couple little things here, and I actually just thought of something again. This is what happens when I do a live podcast, is um, I thought of something again. So I'm going to write that down. Uh, there we go. Okay. All right. So I'm, I don't want to forget all of these things, because this stuff is just coming to me as I'm recording this. Uh, so uh, so yeah, it's not just for it's not just for quote-unquote bloggers. It's for everybody who has a business. Every business pretty much should have a blog of some sort on their website. Um so, so why is it so important? What's the main reason it's so important? Well, there's a lot of them. Um, <laughs> the, the main reason it's so important is it's not just to it's not just to share um, it's not just to share your photos. A lot of people think a lot of photographers think that you know if I have a, a blog on my website, it's just to share photos. So it's basically basically going to be a feed of just photos. But really, what is, makes it so important is uh, the story aspect, so, you know, talking about the story of a recent shoot that you've been on, um, you know, again, Joe's wedding photography, I guess, uh, talking about a shoot that he was on, let's say he had a, uh, a cool experience at a, a, di- a different kind of wedding, maybe it was a, a, a vacation wedding or something like that, um, maybe he gets to share that story that way, and how cool would that be to, to hear that story? You're not just seeing the photos and, and not uh, and not getting any background, but you're getting you're getting the photos and a cool story behind the photos, and that's what a lot of people like to to read about, especially other photographers. A lot of photographers like to read or like to hear the the story behind the photos. Yeah, seeing the photos on Facebook or some sort of social media, uh, that's that's totally fine. Everybody you know wants to see the photos, obviously, but the story behind the photos is really where. You pique the interest of the viewer, um, and, and and you get them coming back for more and hearing your story. That's why all of these videos about people going out on on uh, on, on on trips, on photography trips, are so popular. Because yeah, I mean they could they could say, hey, I went to uh, Glacier National Park, and then post photos of it, and that and that be okay. I mean it's just photos. But when you get to see the person going out on the location. Uh, setting up their camera, talking about where they're at, 
that's what is the, the killer content for everybody who, who wants to see all of your images. Uh, they want to see the image, but they also want to hear that story. The story is key. And so uh, putting a blog on your website and telling a story of a, of a recent shoot, and I'm not saying that it has to be 17 pages long about a story. It just needs to be a nice little, you know, paragraph, couple paragraphs of, of maybe what you did, how, you know, how, how it happened, uh, maybe how you got the job, who contacted you, stuff like that. That's, that's a really important thing that a lot of people like to hear. And so uh, that's one reason why it's so important. Uh, another reason that that I, I I tend to lean towards blogs when it comes to building um, a portfolio site or a, a photography business site is because uh, it gives you many many ways of bringing in customers. So uh, I mentioned adding the photos to your website, and I've talked about this tons on uh, p- previous podcasts. But uh, let's say you're adding photos to a blog. So you you fire up the blog page, you start typing your blog out and you add your images. Well, first of all, you need to keyword your images. And again, this is the part that I've talked about a lot. You need to keyword your images. And what I mean by that is not just uh, you know putting them in, uh, let's say Squarespace or something like that, and adding keywords to, to that entry. You need to actually keyword the, uh, the uh, image file, uh, not just leave it as like IMG underscore 5588 or something like that. Keyword the image file. So when you upload it to, uh, before you upload it to your, your webpage, um, maybe you're a photographer in California, S- uh, San Francisco, California. So you need to tag, uh, tag it as like photographer hyphen California hyphen uh, San Francisco hyphen wedding hyphen and just keyword a lot of the relevant keywords to your business. Uh, you can even keyword your name, you can keyword all kinds of stuff and, uh, and add that to the file name before you even upload it to your site. Now, this can happen on the blog page, it can happen on your portfolio page. Basically, anytime you upload a file that you, you, you want people to see and you want to gain business from, which I hope is everybody's, uh, everybody's purpose of uploading the files if you're, if you're in that business, um, is, is to, to generate more traffic. So this really comes into play when, you are, uh, when people may happen to be looking at like a Google image search. Uh, that's, that gives you a better, uh, a better uh, a better viewing feed from people when, who might be looking at that. So if they type in San Francisco wedding photographer, you probably have a better chance of popping up there as well. So that's one reason to do it. Uh, if you happen to be, and a lot of photographers aren't, if you happen to be comfortable in front of the camera, um, this gives you another, another avenue to, uh, avenue is a keyword for later, check that out. Um, uh, it gives you another avenue for adding more content to your website. So not only are you, can you add, um, add, add the photos to your website, maybe, uh, you break out your phone while you're on a shoot. And, you know, if you're a wedding, maybe it's in between a transition period between the wedding and the reception and all this kind of stuff. Um, maybe you break out your phone and record a, maybe a minute video, a 30 second video, a minute video, something small, and just saying, hey, this is me on the shoot, uh, checking out these, uh, checking out the photos. Photos are really great. And you put that on uh, YouTube, and then you add it to your page as well. So not only do you have a cool little short snippet video, a preview video, uh, maybe of your content, but you also have the images as well. And that gives you, again, another avenue. YouTube would be another avenue to get people to filter back to your website and get potential more jobs. Um, so, uh, that, that, those are cool ways to do that. And then also you have the, the, the story aspect of typing in the paragraph or a couple paragraphs of your trip. Uh, and, uh, you get to, you get to get keywords that way, get to get more article, uh, linking that way. Uh, it won't be immediate obviously, cause Google takes a long time to constantly index websites, index new pages, index articles and stuff like that. So it won't be like immediate. Uh, but you will be able to get that new traffic that way as well. So just in one blog post, you could have three different avenues that lead people back to your site. Uh, one other tip for doing a, a blog post is to make sure, um, there's not really any hard, fast rule for this, but make sure that you have almost at least a thousand uh, words in your blog post. It might sound like a lot, but if you really type out some good paragraphs, that could be like three paragraphs and then you're done. Um, and, 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 and try to put a little bit of keywords in there. Uh, a lot of people kind of maybe will throw in like maybe a 200 word paragraph or something like that, or, um, you know, 200 character or a thousand character post, which is not much. Uh, so it's not really that, it's not really that much content. 
uh, yeah, you're still getting feed from the, the photos, but you're not getting feed from the, the words, which people could type in, and you could add keywords to your blog post. So you're not get, getting re- a, lot of, a lot of traffic that way, so it's, you're basically solely relying on the photos. So if you try to make at least a thousand words, which is technically not a lot, again, you could three paragraphs and you're done. So that could be talking about your preparation for the shoot, talking about you actually being on the shoot, and then a little bit about the editing process of your photos, and that's it. Uh, you can really knock that out pretty quick. Uh, for those of you who don't know how to find the, the the word aspect, a lot of people will type in, start typing in their key, their their uh, blog post directly into the website. Uh, if you want to uh, do that, that's totally cool. But if you want to go to wordcounttools.com, that will be an easy way for you just to copy and paste your content in there, and it'll tell you the the word character or the word count, the character count. All of that stuff. It'll put all of that stuff in there for you, so you can check it that way if you need to. Simple tool, but still, it's something that um, you know a lot of people might need. Um, so again, uh, keyword your post as well, and your URL slug. So what I mean by that is, uh, you know, when you type in the on typical websites, when you type in the name of the article, uh, most likely that will populate as your URL slug. And what I mean by your URL slug is. Uh, you're basically, uh, let's say it's joesweddingphotography.com slash, and whatever follows that slash is kind of your URL slug. So um, you want to make sure you keyword that slug as well. So if let's say you typed in, as the name of your article, uh, you typed in um, Nancy and James's wedding or something like that. Uh, that would be okay, but a lot of people are not going to be searching for uh, Nancy and James's wedding or whatever it is. Uh, you want to make sure you key, keyword that to something like um, San Francisco, uh, beautiful San Francisco wedding or something something like that. You can still keep the the article name the same, but just change the slug. That's that's the important part. Don't really care about the article name. Just change that slug. So you're adding keywords to that slug again to get you more traffic to your site. Uh, again, keyword your posts. If you if you have a keyword section in whatever uh, mobile host or, or website host you use add keywords there, but the content is really the killer part. The actual content of the article, that's what makes it super searchable, and that's where you need to kind of concentrate on your keywords as well. So make sure you put in, uh, uh, I'm a photographer in the San Francisco area, do wedding photography, stuff like that. It'll it'll pop up that way. Um, and then uh, the last analogy, again, I've talked about this a, a while, and this is why I said avenue before. The last analogy that I want to I want to talk about is uh, think of your website as a, a town, a city. Think of your website as a city. So in, in this one building in the city, you have uh, your blog content, your portfolio, your contacts, uh, your services, all this kind of stuff. You have this in one, one building in the city. And there's a lot of other buildings in the city that do the exact same thing you do, meaning there's a lot of photographers in your area that do the exact same thing you do. So... How do you get more roads leading to your building, leading to your, your, your potential part of the, of the city? That's where all of the blog content come in, the articles come in, the images come in, the videos come in. Every time you add something, every time you add an image that has keywords attached to the image, that's another small road leading to your building. Every time you have a video on YouTube, that's another small road leading to your building. Um, every time you... Uh, even just one thing as simple as being just one blog post. That's another large road coming into your city, and then the the uh, images are like little access roads coming off of that road. Uh, I know it's a weird analogy, but that's the best way that I've ever heard it put when it comes to building a website. You want to bring as much uh, accessible roads to your website uh, that way people can always funnel in. So if people in your area, if other photographers in your area may not be adding blog posts, you already have a leg up on them because you're adding blog posts. Uh, if they're not too comfortable in front of a video camera, boom, you got that as well. You can keyword the crap out of that video in YouTube and link it back, and there's another way of doing that. Um, yeah, that that's another way of doing it. Writing quality content for a blog, killer. That, that's going to be the, the main part. Again, you write a blog one day, the next day you're not going to see 50 clients knocking at your door. To, to have you as their photographer. Um, but again, over time, that'll build up and build up and build up and build up, and then all of a sudden, you're going to start having more traffic come eventually. It might take six months, but you start now, and you're going to be doing it. Uh, another thing that I like to think about a blog is, 
uh, is it allows for it allows for new content to constantly be added. So uh, let's say you're not too consistent, basically, about adding new images to your website. Well, a blog will do that for you, and Google will see that and say this this website keeps getting um, keeps getting updated, and so it'll kind of rank it a little bit higher, start ranking it, start paying attention to it more because it always has new content. It's not just a stagnant website that's just sitting there and doing nothing. So always adding that fresh content will, will help your website grow and grow and grow and grow. That's why a lot of photographers who do actually do uh, video blogs, uh, who constantly update their website all the time, they tend to have more jobs because Google sees that. And when people type in on Google, and I'm, I'm saying Google because that's we all know it. It's the king of social. It's it's the king of search right now. So why not talk about them? Uh, that's the kind of the one you need to pay attention to. So uh, when people search in Google, they're probably going to come up more often. Uh, obviously, the the age of the website helps if it's been on the web uh, a lot and it you know has somewhat decent content and and somewhat consistently updated. It's probably going to be king. It's going to take a long time for you to beat that. Uh, but you can do it. You just need to knock out as much content as you can. So don't just think of your photography business as, hey, I'm Joe Blow who likes to go out and take photos. Think of it as I need to, you know, go take photos. I need to constantly keep my updated website. I need to make sure I'm still linking on social because, again, even though Facebook doesn't isn't technically searchable through through uh, Google, so you might think you could just put a blog on Facebook and uh, have people, you know, put your images on there, type a little caption, and be done with it. Uh, you might you might think that's a, a good way to go, but your your content's not being searchable on Google, so uh, or on Facebook. It's not Google's not able to search for it on Facebook. So um, you're kind of just appeasing a small audience when you do that. The best way to really do that is just worry about your your blog on your website, uh, and then once that's done, kind of link uh, link your Facebook post that you could still create. Link it uh, back to your website. Uh, you won't get as much traffic as you would if it's natively on Facebook, but again, you don't really care about your Facebook traffic. You want you want new traffic coming from Google. You want those new customers coming from Google. So uh, those are just a couple small things. Uh, again, when it comes to having a, a blog on your website, the importance of a blog is is one of the main things that I I personally need to make sure I keep up with. Um, even if it's a small job and you put three photos out there and a short paragraph, that's better than nothing. It's still a small road that leads to your leads to your building in the city of your website. So those are just a couple small things when it comes to the importance of a blog. And I just wanted to go over those real quick. So uh, that is pretty much the end of the podcast. It's probably a short one, but it's still, it's the second episode. Come on. Um, so again, if you want to watch this, make sure you subscribe on the YouTube channel. Uh, go to roadtofulltime.com slash YouTube, and you can uh, be re- redirected there and subscribe there. Uh, if you uh, like to listen to this and not see my face, that's totally fine. It'll still be on the podcast as usual. And uh, remember to go to roadtofulltime.com and check out some of the cool posts we have there. Uh, we got some resources out there. It's, it's, it's a fun site. It's brand new, and I'm constantly just updating it pretty much every day, uh, con- constantly updating it with something. So again, thank you guys for joining me in this second episode of the uh, Road to Full Time podcast, and I'll see you later.